Sonia, the Spartan Savoy, Lagostola, and Asimu Jernami, Lagostola, and the Sat, Moya Tedis, and the
járni valjénk, hogy emlés bényhez vetát, Mondjuk, hogy baj várszóra is, Best of my God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have given you sin, 
in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary of the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in Christ, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, constantly accomplish the Paschal mystery within us, and those you are pleased to make new in holy baptism may under your protective care bear much fruit and come to the joys of life eternal. To our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen.
but chosen and precious in the sight of God, and like living stones, let your sons be built into a spiritual house, to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices, acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it says in Scripture, Behold, I am laying a stone in Zion, a cornerstone, chosen and precious, and whoever believes in it shall not be put to shame. Therefore, its value is for you who have faith. But for those without faith, the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. And a stone that will make people stumble, and a rock that will make them fall. They stumble by disobeying the word, as is their destiny. You are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people of his own, so that you may announce the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wondrous light. The word of the Lord. Amen. Christians, but there were the believers in Jesus Christ who looked upon the fire 
and I'm sure they had an immediate connection with their Lord and Savior Jesus in what was happening. And so uh, we have them before we had before us a terrible fire. Uh, the, uh, the crucifix remained shining brightly uh, as the roof had caved in, so the light from the outside shone upon it. So then we looked uh, with all that going on that was years ago, uh, a year ago, uh, to the second letter of Peter. But Peter said, Come on, you are living stones rejected by human beings. You are living stones built into a spiritual house. A spiritual house. So the edifice of Notre Dame uh, was one of wood and stone. Uh, but the, uh, what Peter's talking about is a, a different structure, isn't it? The structure of wood and stone, as most of our churches are made, uh, do not last forever. Uh, they will eventually uh, fade away. And nevertheless, they're beautiful. But what they show, those structures, is something much more meaningful. Uh, a much greater reality. What would that be? And the greater reality would be the enduring, eternal love, the unconditional love of Jesus Christ for you and me. Because within that structure, we offer, as today, a spiritual sacrifice. Today, uh, we celebrate, as we gather here, uh, Jesus' presence with us and his saving acts of redemption in which we are so privileged to share, given that we were baptized in the into Jesus Christ and the, and the triune into of the, of the Trinity uh, because of our baptism, we're united to Christ, and uh, we are nourished as we are today uh, to Holy Communion, the body, blood, soul, and divinity of Jesus. And so therefore, uh, even this beautiful chapel uh, is a place where we gather as Christians, as church, as the body of Christ in Jesus Christ. So yes, our structures are important. But during this uh, pandemic, there are even places in our country, maybe in the world, uh, they considered offering mass outdoors uh, rather than in the church building. And so, I mean, it does highlight for me uh, what really, really is central uh, to the putting up of buildings, right? Uh, so I thought too of uh, August 9th, 1945, maybe some of you old enough to remember. <laughs> I'm not quite old enough to remember. But 1945, uh, the church in Nagasaki, magnificent cathedral, the Immaculate Conception, was filled with people. I think they said there were like 1,500 Catholics worshiping. And when the atomic bomb fell in Nagasaki, that church was flat to the ground. All the Catholics uh, were, were killed. And then in 1980, on that same site, a magnificent new cathedral has been built and dedicated. So, yes, our church buildings are important. But what do those structures really mean deep down? For you and me. So then uh, we come to the gospel, and in that gospel of John, uh, we have Jesus talking about another dwelling. He's talking, says, my, my father's house is where you are heading to. That is a, a heavenly home. And you will find there many dwelling places that I have prepared for you, and my father will welcome you. Well, those poor disciples must have been so confused. I uh, said, where is this place? And, and uh, how do we know the Father? We haven't seen him. So Jesus maybe is a little, uh, a little frustrated after his years of teaching them, but he does explain to them, my Father and I are perfectly one. When you know me, you know my Father. When you know me, you know the love uh, of my Father for you. And so then, as we gather here, and the apostles realize in time that we are drawn into unity, uh, with Jesus Christ uh, at the Mass. And we are nourished in the Holy Communion. And so, again, uh, we look at that first reading that also is uh, beautiful from the Acts of the Apostles. And in that reading, uh, we are reminded of something very important. It's not just our unity uh, as individuals with God Almighty through Jesus. We are reminded uh, that we are called to community. We are called to care and love one another in community. And that's highlighted here again uh, because of the issue that came up in the early church, as we just heard, uh, where the Hebrew Christians and the Hellenist Christians uh, are not being treated the same. And so it's kind of a little fume that's bubbling up in the pot. 
And so then, turning to the Holy Spirit, what do the apostles do? They ask for discernment in, in resolving uh, this issue so it doesn't get any worse, but it gets better. And thanks be to God, they came up with a wonderful solution, uh, and that is that deacons were ordained. Stephen among them, the first uh, martyr, uh, deacons were ordained to serve that table. That took, took away the burden of the apostles having to do that, and it, gave, and it freed them up all the more to preach and teach and organize as they were called to do as apostles. So it's like a win-win situation. Now listen, uh, and, and the Hebrew Christians were fine being treated the same, and how beautiful that is. So in our world today, you and I know uh, that we are in a world where there's a lot of uh, individualism. People say, me first. You've heard that saying, me first. Uh, uh, what's in it for me? And uh, hopefully the pandemic has helped us to realize that's not going to work for a unified world to begin with. Uh, but uh, we're reminded then that we ourselves sometimes are challenged uh, to go the way of Jesus. What is the way of Jesus Christ? It's the way of love. It's the way of sacrificial love. It's the way of going out, out of our uh, little comfort zones, right? And serving others who call upon us in so many varied ways. Uh, so that's what Christ calls us to. And so when we leave the Mass, we know that we are on a mission. We are in the same mission that Jesus began, and we are to continue through the power and the presence of his spirit. And in so doing, we know, as you gather here today, that we are very, very privileged to be his disciples. And in this beautiful, beautiful little chapel uh, that has been erected here, uh, we, we know that Jesus Christ is present in the Holy Tabernacle. Jesus is present in this community. Uh, whether people out there know it or not, Jesus Christ is present in such a special way uh, as we also then offer the Holy Mass. God bless you and this beautiful Easter Sunday. visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, God not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit, incarnate of the Virgin Mary, Amen. For our sake he is crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. Who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one the Holy Catholic and Apostolic Church. I confess in baptism the forgiveness of sins. And I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen.
and that and all sons and daughters may uh, imitate their unselfish example of love and giving. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our Lord. prayer. For all the Father uh, and his many duties, uh, that he remain safe and uh, continue with courage and conviction to guide us and pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our Lord, prayer. For all those who are sick and suffering because of the, the virus, the coronavirus and other illnesses, uh, and those who are ministers to them, doctors, nurses, uh, aides of all, many kinds, ambulance of drivers, we, that they continue with courage to, uh, to carry out their duties. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our Lord, prayer. Lord, hear Loving Father, hear the prayers of your people. We offer these petitions to you as your children in the grace of our baptism. Those spoken and those in the silence of our hearts. In Jesus we pray. Amen. 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 we have received the bread we offer you fruit of the earth the work of human hands it will become for us the bread of life blessed be God forever. forever Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. O oh God, who by the wonderful exchange of the effected in the sacrifice and made us partakers of the one supreme Godhead, grant we pray that as we have come to know your truth, we may make it ours by a worthy way of life through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Lord be with you. And and with you your spirit, lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time of the Lord, to love you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For with the old order destroyed, our universe cast down is renewed, and integrity of life is restored to us in Christ. Therefore, overcome with past so joy, every land, every people, exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers, with the angelic hosts, sing together the unending hymn of your glory, as we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are the holy Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them, like a dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread. 
and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take us, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this. Amen. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial, of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have helped us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. We met our Lord your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, our bishops, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection. And remember at this day, I still fire and cup families in Ivanka of Piedmont. And all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. 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 And to say this command, formed by the divine teaching, we dare to say, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. 
Thanks be to God, hallelujah. 